Oh gosh, what drew me into acting? I was the kid growing up that um, always did uh, performances for the neighborhood kids. You know, I, I was doing magic shows or I was doing puppet shows for my grandma and and uh, and that kind of deal. So I think the the performing thing was just always kind of there in me. And then um, oh, I would do church productions, you know, and get the narrator part. And then uh, community theater. And that was when I did, like, my first play was uh, a place called the Hayward Community Theater in the San Francisco Bay Area. And so I started doing plays because that was the, the thing that kids could get most parts in. Did a lot of plays around the Bay Area. Uh, ended up at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. Then I ended up at a place called the Minneapolis uh, uh, Children's Theater Company. And while I was in Minneapolis going to theater school, all the kids had agents there because they did a lot of uh, industrial films and commercial work. And I didn't get any of those, but I got my first two movie, movie parts. So um, when, when a Hollywood production was uh, trying to find new faces or fresh talent, they would do a, little, uh, do a little movie tour, casting tour. And Minneapolis was one of their stops. So I did a movie called Desert Bloom with John Voight and Jo Beth Williams, Ellen Barkin, uh, Annabeth Gish. It was her first movie. And, uh, and I got cast out of Minneapolis for that. And then shortly thereafter, I got cast in a movie called The Boy Who Could Fly, which was kind of like my first big leading role part. And same thing from being in Minneapolis. So that was it. I, uh, I moved to Los Angeles after graduating high school and just, you know, came to Hollywood and, and was able to have, a, thankfully, a 20, I don't know, 25-year, you know, career. That was the thing about The Boy Who Could Fly. It just had fantastic people. So to be this young 16-year-old kid who gets his first leading part in this, you know, studio film, um, and I, I got to work with, well, for me, to being on uh, the set with Mindy Cohn, I mean, she was on Facts of Life, and it's like, that's that was like, I've made it, I've made it, you know? But then you had uh, Colleen Dewhurst, and you had Louise Fletcher, and Bonnie Bedelia, and Fred Gwynn, who played my uncle, <clears throat> and then, yes... Fred Savage, it was his first movie, my first, uh, second movie, Lucy's first movie, I think she was on a soap opera at that time, so it was, it was a special film. I think for the three of us, me, Fred, and Lucy, um, just for all of those reasons, uh, we've, you know, it took several months to film, we got to be in wires and do all this cool special effects filming because our characters fly in the movie, and so the guys that flew Superman, now we're flying us, and and um, I mean, it was it was an amazing experience. I got to play an autistic kid who had six words in the whole movie, but just would sit there in his windowsill and pretend to fly. Uh, Nick Castle was the uh, writer director who had done The Last Starfighter at that point, and then has since gone on to do all kinds of neat neat things. So he was uh, he was amazing, and it just it was just to have that kind of experience as again a young 16 year old was just like I, I've, I've, I've made it I've made it I could die tomorrow and I will be happy so it was um, it was based on Sonny's book that he wrote and um, a fellow named Larry Thompson that was one of Sonny's business associates uh, was the one who who spearheaded it was the executive producer so it really um, came from kind of Sonny's side of things his perspective. Mary Bono, um, his wife at the time, was uh, behind the movie. Uh, Cher, from what I understand, I think kind of wanted to have nothing to do with the movie. So um, that was, I mean, it was a blast to do because it was a character that I normally, I normally probably wouldn't get that kind of a part. But um, my agent and I kind of rallied with the casting director to be seen for it. And they were doing this thing where they're doing a big uh, nationwide casting tour to try to find Sonny and Cher. Part of that was publicity stunt, and part of it was, hey, maybe we'll actually find some some people that look or sound like him. And when it all came down to it, they weren't finding who they wanted, like for Sonny. And so they started looking at actors that they figure could act the part of Sonny. We'll we'll take care of wigs and noses and mustaches and, and sideburns and those kinds of things. And that's what happened. So I finally got the audition and they went, oh, okay, this, this could work. And did uh, callbacks and stuff and then finally they cast me. And then it was like, then you just steep yourself in uh, watching, watching videos, watching concert footage, watching, you know, the, the, the TV show that they did and just trying to get Sonny and his mannerisms and his voice and those kinds of things. 
out of all the characters, I would say the boy who could fly would be would be up there, and even Sonny Bono, but probably playing Bug in Uncle Buck would would be, I think, for for the kinds of uh, just being a different character, and again, the kind of character that I wasn't normally being cast as. And Bug originally was written as a punk rocker in the original script uh, that John Hughes came up with, and so when I went into the audition. If I walk in there just looking like, well, imagine Jay with hair, you know, young Jay, <laughs> uh, there was no way they were going to see me as this punk rocker. And so I had a friend that came out of the punk rock scene, and he gave me all of his wardrobe and necklaces and chains and this and that and the other. And I had a friend that was a makeup artist, and she did makeup and hair for me. So, you know, kind of was looking like Sid Vicious a bit. And from the time I went into the audition until the time I left the audition, I just played the character. I didn't let him see Jay, I didn't let up. And the first audition was just like this, uh, a videotaped audition with the casting person. I get a call back, and the callback's gonna be with John Hughes and John Candy. And so, so they, we went through the whole rigmarole again, you know, the makeup and the hair and the wardrobe, and I went in, same thing. From the time I walked in the office to the time I left, I just played Bug. And it was cool, because I had like this, this necklace that had, it was like a, a jaw of an animal, and and Candy looks at it and he's like, oh, what's what's what, uh, what's that around your neck? So, like some kind of animal? I go, yeah, man, it's a jaw of a rat, dude. You know, just playing. Oh, that's that's very interesting, you know. And did the thing, and I would have loved to have broke character and just talked to him. Okay, tell me about working on Sixteen Candles and what was it like? You know, making the you know splash and you know stripes and all the movies. That you... But no, I couldn't. Just had to be the character, and then thankfully got cast. So. So about about 15 some odd years ago, maybe it was closer to 20 now. Yeah, I just sense a, the the Lord calling me into just a totally different direction of life, and became a pastor. Um, went to seminary, became a pastor, moved up to Northern California, like you mentioned, and pastored a church up there for like 13 years. And then actually, we just moved back down to Los Angeles a couple of years ago, uh, to this neck of the woods where I'm still a pastor, but just at a different church. And um, you know. I'm totally content doing what I'm doing because I believe it's the Lord's call on my life. But here's the thing. I love the, the Hollywood part of my life, too, and I appreciate it. I feel so blessed that I was able to have a 20-plus a year career and made my living at it and got to do some fun roles and meet a lot of great people. And now what I enjoy to do is... Um, oh, I have a friend that runs a, a, the film department at a local uh, a university here in Los Angeles. So he'll call me up and say, hey, you want to come do help out with some of our student films? I love trying to help inspire the next generation of young actors or filmmakers. Um, even when I was up in Northern California, I was directing theater and plays and school productions because that was a big thing for me. When I was a kid in theater, growing up uh, in, in, in California, was having those people that were my mentors and inspiring me. And now if I can do that with some other young person and just kind of help to show them the ropes a bit, inspire them, I love that. I love that. So I feel like right now I got the best of uh, all worlds. And frankly, when you're in the pulpit too, just like the Lord Jesus did, you're telling stories, right? I mean, you're, you're teaching the Bible, but there's a lot of storytelling involved. And so for me, I feel very comfortable doing that and, and, and just love it. Yeah. <laughs>